The 1960s was very much a decade of change. Wilf Wooler retired and was replaced as captain by Ozzy Wheatley. Well, it was all a bit of surprise, really. I came from Edgbaston, which I suppose was the most highly developing club in the country at the time under Leslie Deakins. Um, and I came into the um, sort of the fourth floor garret at, at High Street. Um, and it was all a little bit of a surprise. But when I first arrived, of course, the senior profession was Alan Watkins. Um, and of course, Gilbert Parkhouse was still playing, um, Jim McConnon. They really had to retire at, uh, fairly shortly after that if we were going to build a young side. And this is Ozzy Wheatley, bowling from the pavilion end, bowling to Russell again. Ozzy was quite a contrast to Wilf. Um, Ozzy managed to get, whereas, whereas counties were trying to block us now and again because they, they said, we're not going to let Wilf roll over us. But with Ozzy, Ozzy persuaded people to play games of cricket. And uh, remember, three days only required declaration sometimes. And the games were always left open and interesting. Well, I played cricket really for fun, still unbelievably these days. Um, the great thing about playing county cricket when you're playing three days and four day cricket, on good wickets particularly, is that if you're going to win a lot of games, you really have to be up for losing a few. Because you make a judgment on declarations and pushing the other side to take chances. And to, to get the upper hand, you have to take a chance yourself. In other words, you have to back yourself. Occasionally go wrong, and it did go wrong from time to time. Um, but generally, we did pretty well at that. Um, and of course, once other sides know you're going to play a game, they come prepared to play a game. And that, that's a great help if you want to be interested in winning championships and things. Everything hinging on this. He's won! Le Morgan have won! Le Morgan have won a magnificent game! <laughs> By seven runs in the last over. And the crowd are going mad here. Playing for Glamorgan is, is, is different. It is um, something to do with it being Glamorgan and therefore Wales. As you know, I came from a, a county side, Warwickshire, um, and uh, I rather assumed that coming to Glamorgan, Glamorgan would be like any other county side. It, it isn't. And of course, when, when Australia or any other touring sides came to play against Glamorgan, it was... Um, like playing a test match. It was like um, Australia playing against Wales and that Australian side in 1964. It was a great game of, uh, of cricket. Australia had a very very strong side out with Bobby Simpson um, and uh, Phil uh, Bill Laurie. Um, they were a very very strong side. Too far off his off stick when he padded up then. Just need it away to build him. I think if he hadn't got his pad just outside the line. Well, we were having a pretty poor season, and uh, I think Ozzy had said, "Look, if we can do well in this fixture, then people will forget about a lot of the past." So uh, we, we set about it, as it were. It's a high one's going to catch that. It was the, it coincided with the Nationalist Southford at, uh, at Swansea in Singleton Park and uh, there was throngs of people around them watching this uh, match develop, you know. Jim and I went on last because we'd done quite well in that last hour and really it was a stunning, there was mass choirs behind us, God knows how many, perhaps five, six hundred voices, all the choirs and uh, it really was a wonderful occasion and we came away from there so full of hoil, you know, I, I thought there's no way that we're not going to win. 2-3-2 two, two, and the target 2-6-9, leaving them 37 runs. And that's a catch. And Sellers is dismissed. And there are nine Australian wickets down for 232. 37 runs. There are on the ground here, I would say, 10,000 people. Shepherd has now bowled a mammoth spell of 51 overs, 29 maidens, four for 67, so he's on his 52nd over. And his spin, Powell, Presley, 28 overs, three for 64.
the more than have beaten Australia for the first time and everybody's grabbing wickets and the crowd are going mad. It was wonderful, yeah, and uh, you know, the celebrations were as usual, you know, in the, and we, we always used to take the tourists down to Ponte de Lice to listen to the choir practicing in the, the fountain, I think the pub was, and uh, they came down, they were great sports mind, you can say what you like about Australia, when you're playing against them it's tough but they don't seem to hold anything against you afterwards, you know, they're first in to say well done and have a beer. So, yeah, that was the first of, a, that really was a great victory. August 1968 against the Touring Australians, again at uh, Swansea. And uh, what, are your, what are your memories of 68? Well, again, you, you know, um, the talk was before the game, can, uh, can Glamorgan do it again after beating Australia in 1964? Could they repeat that? Um, and we had a little chat in the dressing room before the game, you know, look, we've done it once, there's no reason why can't, we can't do it again. We, I, I wasn't playing that game. I, I was playing part of the season by that time in 1968. And, uh, Don took over the side, and it really was a great pleasure to see him have that honour, really, to, to captain the Glamorgan side. Well, Don, Don was just one of those uh, extraordinary bowlers. I, I'd never played with or against a better one. Didn't matter what the state of the game, Shep wanted a bowl, and he had to prize the ball out of his hand. And fielding at short leg, as I was then, at Death Alley, a sort of place square to the wicket, where people sometimes try to hit him or chase up the wicket, you know. Staying there, I never got hit off ship in 18 years. And the ball used to fly past, but you stood and looked at it. Because if that ball came at you at that speed, it would be, could he take, the batsman had taken a hell of a risk. And he could have got an edge onto the pads and up in the air, and you catch an easy one. And now ship, ship had everything a bowler had. He had great heart, tremendous technique, would bowl forever, and never wanted to give up. How much more do you need? Yeah, it was. It, it was a completely different game of cricket, different mode. Uh, Tony Tony Lewis was injured, and it was I was captain, right? Um, it was a, a good wicket, you know, a good wicket to bat on, and all the rest of it. I remember the crowds. I mean, uh, it was a, over a, it was over a bank holiday, uh, the August bank holiday. Must have been Saturday, Sunday, Monday. The crowds were amazing. I mean, I'd never played in crowds like this. I mean, I, I suppose the capacity for St Helens was probably 10 or, 10 or 12 thousand pounds maximum but there must have been 15 16 thousand people in that ground they were back right along on the rugby pitch as well i mean i've never seen crowds like it it was huge nothing greater than st helens when there's some top class cricket of this nature on with a great welsh crowd around the boundaries edge and that my memory really was of mark and nash bowling out in the first innings Nash, you bowled absolutely beautifully. Um, bowled the Australians out, basically. Uh, and then we had a bit of a thrash second innings and, uh, and set up a, a target of 300 plus. Um, and had all day, Monday, to bowl them out. It suddenly devolved, it came to the last day when they wanted whatever it was, quite a big total to win. You know, they could have won quite easily because in those days we, we would bowl, what, 90 odd overs in a day maybe. And it was more of a cat and mouse situation, I thought. Here they are, 195 for six, needing 365 runs. And the odds now swinging increasingly in favour of Glamorgan. And the First wicket to fall, a brilliant run out by Reese of Redpath. Inverati, well bowled by Nash, knocked the off stump out, and then the wickets began to go to Lewis. Till this afternoon, Shepherd has come in with two. And the main Australian batsman holding up the innings, Sheehan, with 80, 13 fours. This chap, Sheehan, Paul Sheehan, they uh, kept batted number three, four, something like that was winning the game for them and I bowled him a terrible long hop and he hit it back like a tracer bullet and I caught him. Bang! A wonderful catch. Only someone six foot three and arms like, well, as long as soon as that could have made it. Had I not got something behind it and perhaps, dare I say, being the fielder that I was in those days, I, that would have gone and they'd have won, probably. One can say with absolute certainty now that the target of 365 
is out of the reach of the Australians. That could be out. That's out. Court matted. And Glamorgan have won. Glamorgan have won by 79 runs. What a wonderful sight, John, isn't it? It's terrific, isn't it? To the Welsh crowd in victory, it's tremendous. But to win that, and the best line of all, of course, came from the Australian captain, Barry Jarman, who was captaining that day, and a wicketkeeper. We stood up on the balcony afterwards, I can hear it now. And he said, well, he said, you know, we're here in, in Swansea, we played Glamorgan and we've been beating them. What's new, he said. I was uh, absolutely delighted, of course, at the end. And, uh, and again, uh, you know, the, the, well, everyone in the crowd was singing, the crowds were around the, the, the way off the dressing, off, off the field, as it were. And really, it was uh, another occasion that will long be remembered. And I'm very, very pleased, obviously, to be captain. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is one of the great days of my cricket in life. And I'm just happy to have played in this Glamorgan side. I don't want to pick anyone out. They've all played a wonderful part in the victory. And also, I think Australia have played cricket extremely well for three days. It's been a great game, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you have. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, I, th I think those three years, uh, 68, 69 and 70, were certainly three of the greatest years that I played in with Glamorgan, I would have thought, you know. The balance was right, you know, we had people who could move the ball around in the air. We didn't have any genuine pace, but uh, Cordell and Nash were very uh, astute with the new ball. They didn't waste it sort of thing. But Lawrence Williams came almost out of the leagues, you know, and, and fitted in quite beautifully. So that, that was really a, a wonderful, wonderful year for Glamorgan. But I think that was one of the great Glamorgan sides, you know, there was, there was a balance there, there was a, a good spirit there. And 69 in particular uh, was, was terrific because the, the mode had changed, you know, between Wilf's era and then Ozzy Wheatley and later Tony and uh, Tony Lewis. But the, the mood had changed and uh, there was no, quarrelling about anybody else's decoration, you know, taking umbrage because you didn't think it was a fair decoration. Ozzy, you know, he would really have a go at, uh, at anything. And uh, he had done that for six years and then Tony came along. And Tony had obviously taken all this aboard, you know, and uh, became a very clever captain and a good player as well. And they had uh, an empathy, which was about trying to play the game to win without cheating, without doing anything like now, shouting and screaming, right? just to beat the opposition by skill. And Ozzy brought that into Glamorgan after when Wil Wilford retired, and Tony playing under him inherited that same attitude. In those years under Oz, we became second and fourth. If he'd had a, one more batsman in the side, we'd have won the championship. And if we'd had a few more runs, you know, I think we could have got there. But that's how it goes, isn't it? Tonight we pay tribute to the Glamorgan County Cricket Club, winners of the County Cricket Championship for the second time since their entry on the first class scene 48 years ago. Now in the next 30 minutes we're going to look back on this great season and we're delighted to have with us in the studio most of the players involved, the President, the Secretary, Bill Edwards, uh, the West Area Secretary and our television scorer. And uh, obviously we start with Anthony Robert Lewis, born Swansea 1938, product of Neath Grammar School, Cambridge University, captain of the 1969 champions. Tony, how did you feel at the start of the season? Well, at the start, Alan, of course, none of us have been on a winning side. Uh, we won the championship at all. Uh, we couldn't have expected to win it. This is beyond our wildest dream, really. But I think secretly we had hoped, and I had hoped, that we might come away with something. It's a year that I will always remember because there were so many uh, very exciting games in that, in that season. And we had lots of very uh, good wins. We beat Gloucester home and away and um, that because Gloucester were, were top and then they were second for a while and that home and away wins uh, against Gloucester um, put, the, um, you know, put it in our favour. 
Well, indeed. Well, now, Glamorgan by this time were climbing steadily. Uh, and by this time they were rivaling Gloucestershire and Surrey. And the results in July further consolidated Glamorgan in the table, although no one even at this stage would predict with any degree of optimism uh, that uh, they were title contenders. Uh, once again, the honours were shared here in July pretty evenly throughout the team. Uh, and then in the game against Sussex at Hastings, all-rounder Peter Walker's effort of 73 with a bat, 5 for 110 against Sussex uh, helped us to 20 valuable points. This time Glamorgan were creeping nearer the top. And then on August the 12th came the top of the table clash with Gloucester at Cheltenham and these two gentlemen, Malcolm Nash with 6 for 37 and Brian Davis with 67 valuable runs made victory possible and cut Gloucester's lead to 8 points at the top of the table. And I, then I remember playing against Middlesex at Swansea and um, we'd lost a few wickets and I happened to be batting um, and we were pulling the game round. We looked as if we were going to win the game. And then I, I got out. And I remember going into the dressing room at St. Helens and Tony Lewis uh, saying that um, that's it. I think we've lost the game and, and we've lost the championship. Uh, and putting his pads on in, in the corner was Malcolm Nash. And Malcolm's very words to Tony were, uh, Captain, uh, we haven't lost the game yet. And uh, with that, the time came for Malcolm to go out and bat. 26 runs between Glamorgan and another 10 points and what might prove to be the championship. It could well be. That's gone through Radley the first time he's been beaten, a very awkward one, and it's four. He's on now, it's 23rd. And he's hit that! It's a six! A six. The Morgan are now tying. This is wonderful cricket. The crowd are standing up. I have not seen sights like this since they beat Australia that first time. I disappear over the top of this 20-foot uh, balcony in the next ball. I apologize. Just one run they time to win this game. And he's hit it! There they go! It's a six! And the crowd watch him! Just look at him! And Morgan have won one of their greatest victories of the last decade, and it might well win them the championship. We're playing two matches down there, Swansea, Middlesex and Essex. And I think we have beaten Middlesex and played well. We were, we were playing well. We were unbeaten that year, the whole season. Uh, and we were playing well, and, but Essex were... looked as if they might... They might uh, win the match as well. Was, uh, and, and of course the crowd there was huge as well. Doctor's papers, I think, it must have, I don't know what day it was, it was probably a Tuesday. A huge crowd there. Um, you wouldn't get out on a Tuesday now. I mean, it was the game that we would put us on the way to winning the championship. Uh, it was vital game to, to, to win. And uh, I didn't get, I, personally, I didn't get a run. I mean, I got, I think I got a couple of low scores. Um, but my memory was that basically the, the last over when they needed uh, seven or eight to, to win and, and, and Tony Lewis threw the ball to me, the last over to, and this was, I mean, it's a lot on your shoulders then when you think, well, um, they were eight wickets down, so we need to get two wickets in six balls and throwing it to me, who was a, uh, a part-time spinner. It was very brave of him, I must admit. And Essex very much the favourites now, leading six runs, the last over. Not 18 overs in the bottom corner. 19 overs gone. This last over with a six could win this match for Essex. Come any closer than finishes, any closer finishes than this. It really is another cliffhanger. And they stop! They stop! Gordon Barker was was batting, was facing me, and second second ball. I remember him coming up the wicket and walking straight past 
a ball he thought was probably going to spin and it didn't and it went straight on and, and Ivan stamped him brilliantly. Three balls left, four runs required, the last pair at the wicket, East and Lever. Four runs. It is one of the tightest, tensest finishes I recall. And great conferences between wicketkeeper and captain. Ten points at stake and maybe a championship. Any by nail biters in this crowd must be down to the quick and halfway down their toenails. Oh, and he's missed the wicket, and it could have been the run out that Glamorgan needed. Very quick bit of work by Avian Jones. They're going to take their singles. Three runs and two balls. The field's spread all over the place. They don't quite know whether to come in or go out. And that's an extraordinary backhanded shot. Never seen it before. Batting left-handed, he swung across the flight, turned the right the way round, and then he could have one ball and two runs. That can win the match for Essex. The wicket can give to Morgan ten points, an almost certain championship victory. Don has had a word with Tony Lewis. They've got to bring a fielder in here, quite these fielders in the deep, it's going to, need to, going to be a especially good throw. There must be a fielder or two praying that it's not going to them now. One runs a tie, two, Essex win. And that's gone to Ozzy Wheatley, and if they run this second... He's out! The one a wonderful throw by Wheatley, and the crowd are going mad, what a finish! Ten points and probably the certain championship for Glamorgan. But I do remember the run out because Ozzy Wheatley was down at third man. And um, with his long strides, as it moved in to pick the ball up. I won't say quickly or slowly, something in between. But picked it up very cleanly and threw it very well. Uh, it was thrown very well, I and mean, Ivan had a, a stride to make to knock the bows off, but the fact was the, it was the traje trajectory that made it. it. It was a first bounce throw, and that's where you get the speed and the, the accuracy and, and, the, and right into the clubs. Well, I've been taken through this many times, in fact. I, I have to be honest, I didn't think I'd practiced fielding for some years by that stage of my career. and. Uh, so I suppose the odds were on the batsman. There was a long single in it, but they went for three. So I had a pretty good chance of getting one of that. In fact, I still maintain I flew it straight into the top of the stumps, one bounce. Peter Walker always says it went wide and I've been had to dive for it. But if you look at the film carefully, you'll see straight into the top of the stumps, bails off, no chance. At the end of that, we knew we had to uh, play uh, at, at Cardiff. And uh, we played at Cardiff. Uh, against Worcestershire, and Worcester were a pretty fine side with people like Tom Gradenley playing and one thing and another. But I think I should mention the fact that uh, the great Majid Khan played a most wonderful innings in that match and set us up uh, in a position to, uh, to obtain victory. Well, I'm glad to stick with Majid on, on this. Uh, we knew we had to win this one because the last game was at the Oval, and we never did well against Surrey. And so Alan Jones and Roger Davis on a bad pitch against a very, very high-class Worcester attack, including Ranburn Holder. You know, there were some very, very good bowlers there. <laughs> so we reckon we had to actually get a decent score, whatever we did. And so I was going in at number four that day, I think. And it was at the old pavilion at now the Swaylick Stadium, then Sophia Gardens. <clears throat> and so Roger, I think, got out. So I raced upstairs to get my pads on to find Madgett, the only one in the, in the dressing room, like this, on his bat. He was asleep. This is our number three. 
playing the most important innings of the season, fast asleep. So I shook him and I said, Vera, it's time to bat. He sort of shook his head and got a pick up, got 130. Time to bat, boy. I remember it well because it's funny, as I, I, I butted the other side to Majid an awful lot when he was with us. And I remember Van Benholder, Van Benholder, the uh, West Indian fast bowler, bowling at him. And he got one to lift sharply and hit Majid on, on the glove. And I went down to see if he was all right. And he said, Alan, go away. He said, I'm fine. And um, he went back to bat and I was the other side when he got that 120 odd or 130 odd. And again, you, you played on wickets that um, turned a lot. Gifford was playing, Van, the quick bowlers were Van Ben Holder. Um, and he just took attacks apart. He, was, um, he really was a magnificent player. I know most of us, and I think all of us around this ground, would like to see this great craftsman Don Shepherd take this, this last wicket. It will be a moment that he will remember all his life. Not that he would wish it to go to him as a particular individual. He's modest, he plays for his team, he's always likely to push a youngster in to get a couple of wickets when the going's good to build up their morale. But he's the general now, look at him. I knew I was uh, getting close to the 2,000 wickets and then uh, I, I can't think who it was. Uh, Jim Yardley was caught at slip and uh, he said, he said to me not many years ago, he didn't know whether he hit it or not, but he walked, but it, it'll do anyway. And uh, yeah, I got the 2,000th wicket and uh, on came a glass of champagne. The late Phil Cleft, great man, great chap, brought it on and we had a drink on the field. I think Ivy and Jones would love to come out for this last wicket. Off the pad, he's gone, he's touched that! He touched it and he was out and we didn't realise it for a second. And De Morgan have won their second championship, but Don Shepherd has taken it. Look at those two. Very good friends, Tony Lewis and Don Shepherd, both working this together. Well, I, I mean, that, that amount of emotion was quite embarrassing. I think I just put my arm on his shoulder and he did the same to me. But now, I mean, uh, they go around kissing people. And I thought, well, somebody kissed me every time I got a wicket, I'd have, I'd have, been, <laughs> I'd have caught something. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened right, didn't it? You know, um, uh, Court Walker, Bold Shepherd. What an ending to uh, to a season. I remember the walking off in the crowd and embracing Shep because it, we, I mean, for us it wasn't the, the day; it was the, the the end of a the war, you know, the campaign. Uh, when you struggle through every day of the whole season, that's the merit of the country championship. That it's you've got to produce it all the time. And I remember sort of. We collapsed in some sort of relief in each other's arms because um, it was all over and we'd done it. And it was a great feeling. That was the feeling I, I had. I've, I was oblivious to the crowd. We had every one of those players had won a game somewhere, Wilfs Maxim. And I remember standing there in the crowd, was singing, somebody brought up some champagne and we sprayed that around, the usual sort of thing. And then I had a brainwave. I sort of slipped away for a short one took down the brand new flag that uh, Glamorgan had probably paid quite a lot of money for and I put it in my cricket bag and until very recently um, it's been in my possession I had it up in my son's bedroom but I think it's back where it belongs really in the, in the museum. Well I remember in 1948 going to Cardiff General Station to meet the championship winners who came back from the Hampshire game at Bournemouth. And interviewing then, J.C. Clay, uh, now president of the Glamorgan County Cricket Club. Mr. Clay, I don't remember exactly what you said that night, but you have been quoted as saying that you didn't think you'd ever see a championship again in your lifetime. Well, I may have, and if I did, I'm delighted to have to swallow my own words. How not, do you... Not often you do that. <laughs> now, Wilfred Wooler, uh, how about uh, this side of 48 and the side this year? How do you see them different? Well, I think this is a, a much stronger all-round side. It's quite easily the best batting side Glamorgan have ever had. When you get players like Malcolm Nash at number nine, and he would bat six in most county sides. Very strong side, a well-balanced bowling side, and, of course, a superb quartet of fielders close to the wicket. I, th I rate these four the greatest four in any team in the world today, and I think that's uh, helped them win the championship. Well, it's nice to have you both back with us and looking as young as ever and as fit as ever and as far as J.C. Clay is concerned I propose drinking champagne with you again J.C. Clay for another championship win. <laughs> All right? <laughs>
Yes, I shall be delighted. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen, and let's, let's not wait another 21 years for the next one, all right? Hey? <laughs>